Hello. In this sixth video, I would like to talk about curves and how you can really generate fun objects that way as a tool to create a little more complex, perhaps organic looking shapes. Now we're going to use curves as well as a few modifiers to create some vases or vases, depending on how you say it. I interchange it most of the time. <laughs> so let's just get started. I'm going to add a curve, Shift A. Now on my screen, you'll see I have plenty more objects here, and that's because I use extra objects. But for this demonstration, there are two things. We can use the Bezier, which has the handles, or Path Tool. And both of these have different types of operations. With the Bezier tool, you can see it's already curved slightly. And with this, we have access to handles that might be familiar to people who use um, a vector vector programs like Illustrator or Inkscape. So we're going to move these around. You can see that's how you manipulate it. We can move it this way, kind of like, like that. Now with the Path tool, this is something I've used mainly because it makes sense to me at least. You have points going across this way. You can click on this and if you, if you move it upwards or to the side here, you can see it's kind of like smoothing the curve. Now, if you come from Photoshop, to me, this seems like almost what uh, Lazy Nazumi is doing to your, your your strokes. So you're like, yeah, so you can, kind of like, I want the shape to generally look like this, and you can see it's smoothing it out that way. But both of these uh, are really fun, but they both fit our purposes. So I'm just going to delete both of these, go to the front view with Thumbpad 1, and I think I'll, I'll do. I'll use a bezier for this run. So it's going to be flat this way. I'm going to do RX 90 to bring it up this way, and then RY. So I'm going to go to the Y axis and bring it up. It seems like here it's saying negative, by negative 90. All right, so RY negative 90. So now we have this shape here. We can go in to tab mode and we can just start creating some fun shapes. Uh, what I'm going to do eventually is use the screw modifier, which will, I guess, loft it to circular motion to create some sort of like uh, vase, vase, some pottery. So we can set that up by clicking on the curve itself in, in the modifier panel, modifier properties, add modifier, and let's head to screw. Now it's going to default into the z-axis and that's something we really don't want because it's just the circular motion it's going this way if we go to y that's not really what we want we want to loft it this way which the red is here sorry uh screw it this way where the red object here is saying it's x up here x-axis so click on this and now you can see it's modifying in a way that makes sense however you can see it's still acting kind of funny due to these two points here and that's because of our curves so we curve it down this way that makes way more sense same thing up here because it's going straight up we don't want to do it that way we want to bring it down and that'll be good bring this down like this and now we can create a sphere but that's not what we're after so how do we have more access to uh, points of, I guess, articulation or handles. Well, we can subdivide the curve. If we click here, click here, W, and subdivide, we've now added another point of manipulation. We go to the front, and now we can like drag this this way, maybe more like a finer point going up. You can kind of see that we can just create a really fun looking face this way. We can also change to like different points like this, bring this down, bring it up to scale it up. Very cool. Uh, with the previous tutorial, I also mentioned how I tend to like duplicating and then converting it into mesh so that I can always have like one master uh, object that I can manipulate and create more and more objects to populate the scene with. I try to work smartly that way. So instead of calling this Bezier curve, Let's just duplicate this, move it to the side, with the uh, hotkey Alt C, convert it to a mesh, and let's call this, oh, okay. F2 vase 
that way. So if we tap into it, you can see it's created a really nice yeah, topology, pretty good vase this way. Uh, one cool thing too is within the Bezier thing, we can actually lower the resolution and increase it depending on your needs. So you can see you can get pretty low poly like four preview. Oh, don't want to Alt C that. That's our master. So Shift D, G X, Alt C, Mesh. You can see it's it's I think a really good way to get some nice space meshes or like low poly stuff. Uh, and if you're coming straight, strictly from 2D and don't understand between high poly and low poly, it's it's just the number of faces you have. The higher your poly you get, it takes more rendering time. Uh, I have. A, I dabbled with modding way back, like the Quake days, as well as like uh, Half-Life, and so my definition of low poly and high poly kind of needs to be updated. <laughs> uh, like now, there's like things with, like there are millions and millions of faces that you can bake down and stuff like that. But I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, God, I remember like the days of oh, anyway tutorial. So let's bring this back to twelve because I think the default. Looks really nice. I think this is the good enough, good enough for our purposes here. All right, let's drag this way, and uh, now, now it's just play, have fun. So we can, oh, we learned about subdividing. Let's subdivide this again. We can drag this down. That looks pretty phallic. Let's not do that. We can bring this up this way, drag it down this way, subdivide, bring these a bit higher. We can really not make it. <laughs> let's not look at that. Okay, bring down this way, and this way, subdivide, almost like a flask or a top. Bring it down this way, bring it up, and here, mesh, bring it this way. All right, so we've created three objects using the Bezier. But you know what, let's just delete this one and let's show you the path tool before I embarrass myself further and get flagged by creating hilarious content. <laughs> so same kind of concept. Uh, let's uh, RY90. I'm going to add in a screw modifier. And let's, as you can see here, it's creating that will be the X. Everything's in here, so if I drag it this way, you can see now it's a pipe. Uh, the only thing difference between the only difference between the Bezier and the path is like we actually have to fill this in later on. But for me, I like using the path more because it makes more sense in terms of manipulating the profile of you. I, I feel more comfortable using this tool here. So we can just like drag this a bit closer like that. Bring that way, Alt-C mesh. You can see it's a little more dense because of all the subdivide modifiers here. We'll do it like this, bring this down. That's kind of neat. Bring this down again. Subdivide, bring this down, bring it. Like that. Subdivide, maybe stick this out a bit more. And we can bring this down, bring this up to create kind of like a neat looking ridge like that. Uh, we can also use the scale tool. So if I hit subdivide, scale this, you can see we can create like smoother transitions that way. We can go out like this, go up, Alt C, oh, did I Alt C? Nope, Shift D, bring out Alt C, mesh. So, as you can see, like, no time at all. I've created a bunch of objects that I can populate my scene with. Uh, now with the path tool, there's like holes here. We can just tab into it, use our edge select, and click up here too. Alt click here, F, and now it fills it in. Blender also has a cool feature. If you don't want this end gone, end gone meaning that's more than four sides, we can select all the edges here and hit space, grid, and grid fill. And let's fill the grid that way. And we can go back up here and we can kind of do the same thing. If you want like, or if you want like this hole here, uh, it'll look better if it was solidified. 
because this is just a single plane, we can go to the Add Modifier panel, Solidify, and now you can see it's created a bit of a depth here. We can like increase the size of this slightly, and then we can apply all with the uh, tab out, apply all, tab back in, and now you can see there's a depth here. And uh, right now the shading is kind of funky, so we can hit auto smooth and it'll clean up the edges up here. You can see the difference. This is what we want. And same thing with this one here. Click around the edges. This is my contact sensitive grid fill. We can copy the modifier, link the modifier from here to here. So click on this, click on this. Control L, modifier. Oh, I think I got it backwards, my bad. We want to copy these objects to here. It's modifier. That's that working? Oh, no. Let's just do it this way then. Solidify. Do it the old way. And then go to normals. Auto smooth. And there you go. Apply all mesh. And look at that. We have a number of cool objects. Now I'll show you something else cool with the auto smooth. Uh, let's just say with this one here, let's say if we want to further manipulate, we'll select the faces around here. Uh, Alt E, extrude along normals, and let's just drag this up slightly. Now look what happens when you start lowering or increasing it. Well, lowering it here, you can see it kind of like smooths it and uh, everything above this certain angle here. So this is a little bit too steep. You can see it's creating this nice ridge effect. I kind of like the look of this, especially if it's like a base here. So you can definitely use this to create really interesting shapes this way. Now this can be seen, I think, as a, a smoothing error, but if we're looking for aesthetics from a 2D point of view, this could be like a decorative element. Yeah, all right, hopefully you learned something. Bye-bye.